Hello friends, welcome to the Sunday show. Today we're going to build a very easy and minimal tool required project that uh, can be used in any room in your house. I actually want to use it in my bedroom next to my bed for some more lighting and in keeping the, the, the cost minimal we rated our pile of wood so we found two pieces of wood that are similar and we're going to use those two pieces for our build and we did go to one of our local um, our local storage unit our local storage unit <laughs> and uh, we found this lamp which we're going to modify to attach to the uh, what is that going to be like a wall sconce I, mean, I don't know what you call oh, it just call it a wall shelf yeah a wall shelf lamp doohickey thingy yeah doohickey thingy <laughs> you know, so I think that should be the title too a doohickey, doohickey thingy, thingy yeah, yeah will get zero views so no that'll grab people just for sure oh yeah right so stick around to see how we're going to achieve that or <laughs> better yet if we're going to achieve that because we're going to have to to address some uh, a couple of obstacles and one of them is getting this off and the other of course is we'll have to to cut this cable because and then reattach it because it cannot go the plug is too big to go through without leaving a visible hole in the wood. We'll see. Okay. So stick around, right? Stick around and hopefully I will stick around too. Not see if I'm doing anything or not. Yeah, I am. So first, we need to disassemble this base. No disassemble. Number five alive. Mm -hmm. Is that the copyright infringement? I think it's just a quote. All right. So I need something to knock this screw out now. A hammer? Yes, a hammer will be good. Okay, well. Do you want to get your hammer? Ready? Yeah. My only concern is I don't want the spring to fly. Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? doesn't have tension anymore. It came apart. It did came apart. And I think I have a place for this spring too. The refrigerator door. I don't think that's an appropriate refrigerator door spring. I don't think I'm being a very good videographer today because the you're camera's not? moving and you're moving all over the place. I'm actually staying in a very finite space. No, you're space. not. You're like this. But I'm like, I had a small screwdriver in my hands. I needed to pop this rivety thing off. Rivety thing? There. This should just pop off, but it doesn't want to. it through? No, because it is bigger here than it is inside. Okay. And it has a bend there. Okay. So, let's see. It is intended to protect the cable and I was trying to save it. I mean, I can definitely break it, but I was trying to save it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try so I won't cut myself. So like or no stab feeling. yourself? If 
nothing else works, drum them. Yeah, right? when all else fails, cut it out. So hold still a little bit so we can see what's going on here. Oh, I'm just I just destroyed I it. <laughs> okay, so it was a little like plastic rubber grommet that was fixed in there. We couldn't get it to pop out with a screwdriver, so we used the Dremel to just cut it, and now we can get that out. You see, we have to cut the cable anyway because it will not go through this either. Okay. So the next step is to take the, this nut off. And for many reasons we have to cut the cable. She was hoping we wouldn't have to cut the cable, but clearly there is no way that we can take it out without cutting it. We have to cut the cable. It's already cut. <laughs> that was not a very safe uh, thing, was it? No, that's weird. Okay. Okay, so it's already cut. That'll make it easy. So now we're going to... So let me see real quick. This is the bend that was inside that, so it's already halfway cut, so we'll just use that as our not, spot. Right? Not the greatest design for right. the lamp, but you know. Okay. We will be able to make it work. So now what we're going we're going to cut what is going to eventually be ourself to the correct width on our circular saw. We're not going to do too much uh, I like this little monkey. thing. Oh we need to probably get the everything for such a little worry. I don't know. Is that even plugged in? Yeah. You're sure? Yes. Okay. Okay. And then what about these? Yeah. And we're going to use from a different project uh, these, and we'll probably cut them too, right? Yeah. To, to create a, more of an effect. We're going to leave all these imperfections. They give it a rustic and uh, unique... I thought we were using the bottom half down here with the curve. Whatever, but we'll use that for something. Yeah, but probably not on this project. Okay. So how long do you want to cut it? Well, you need to measure it. Okay, so this bottom board is the actual shelf. This is the scrap board we're going to use to make the support for the shelf. And we have lined it up so oh. it's crosswise and then matches up here. So this is going to be our length for the support. Now he's going to flip it over and we'll use the shelf board as our straight edge for marking that. And then you can line up those two together and cut them at the same time. Just that saying. would make too much sense. Just saying. Since they were cut simultaneously in the first place, it makes sense to cut them together anyway. On a different zone. Yeah, but still. The operation was successful, but the patient died. Yeah, I think that looks good. We might need to do a little sanding. Yeah. So we'll do that off camera because it's not very exciting. Okay, so now we have sports. Okay, so this is our shelf. We have clamped it to the board so that it's flush here. This is our workbench. We're using a piece of one of the boards that, the, that we cut off, using that as a spacer so we can line that up with the end of the shelf. And you don't need to do that one yet. Oh, okay. And then, so that we make sure that we're getting the nails in, you want to gonna put that back. Why? To help hold it in place. We have marked a line on the front of the board as a guide for where the other board's going to be.
That was my fault. Okay. So, looking down. Did you miss any? Nope. We're there, this is solid, and we got every single one of them in place. So, we're going to repeat the process for the other side. You could if you want to put glue there. I don't think it's necessary, but... Mark your front of the board. If you were so inclined. Mark the front of your board for your guide. I have to mark the back first. Why? Because you put the board back there. Or don't hold it at an angle. Nope, it's not in place here. Okay, we're gonna get this one in and we'll come back. Okay, now we have our shelf built. We used our spacer and our markings to make sure that they were even on either end and that we made sure we put all of our nails, brads. Now, what do you think we should put it? I would like to see that knot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it down a little bit. More down? Yeah. We just need to find a spacer so we can make sure the Oh, well, we have the spacer. We can use the same spacer, right? It's not the same thing, though. It's not the same distance. This is the same width. So the same spacer in the back will tell us where the fronts are. I was talking about from top to bottom. Oh, we don't care about that. don't care. <laughs> we have to think about the spacing of the lamp though, so we're gonna look at that and, and we'll be back. Okay, so we have marked the spot on the board where uh, we want the lamp to come out from. Uh, it's approximately centered, uh, and so now we're gonna drill that hole. Maybe. Some more force on that. I probably don't have it in the correct. I thought I had it on drill. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Apparently, when you use tools, you need to use them correctly. Oh, yeah. It helps. Okay. So the idea is, just hold that up real quick so we can mm -hmm. see it. Um, the idea is that we have this little uh, threaded area that comes out from it. So it is approximately halfway through the board. But what we have here is a little nut and a washer to hold it together. So our plan is to stick this through, but we want to drill the hole bigger so that the nut and the washer can go in and actually hold that to the board. But right now we're going to test and make sure that that is a big enough Hole. looks like that's perfect okay and then we're going to take a bigger drill bit and drill the back side of that about halfway well actually a little bit more than halfway through the board uh, so that we can match up the threads there that is correct I do not so here's the larger drill bit it might need to be Larger too, we'll see. Okay. We should have used that to measure. Yeah, it's not big enough. You see how big that is? Okay. But that's the idea. We've created a. A larger opening on the back side. Right. Okay. Where is the nut? Maybe what we can do. It's. Well, it was over there. Maybe you've got the board on it. Well, do you have a bigger drill bit? No, I think maybe I can press the nut in the wood. You know? Mm-hmm. And I can use this drill bit to expand the hole a little bit. Okay, let, I need to move it so I can... You know, actually, we could have done that in the front and just fitted it in. <laughs> oh, well. 
We've done it in the back now. It's flush here. So it's flush with the back of the board. Let's see if we can get that to go in now. That's a big drill, guys. It's just a drill bit, not a whole drill. The drill is big, the bit is drill. The, <laughs> the bit is big. <laughs> we promise, guys, we've not been drinking. Unfortunately, maybe that's later, after this project's finished. Don't drink and two. Right, that's bad. lining up at all? No, I have to do it more. I mean, it's lining up. It's, I'm being a problem. little creative here, trying to get it to go through using a socket set. Socket Make sure set. you don't go too deep. I think we should be there by now. Well, it's a little bit crooked, so I'm trying to straighten it up. Okay, let's see if we can. Ah, okay, so after a whole lot of pushing that bolt through the board with that socket, we have it Attached there. It's, it's actually nice it's actually very tight, very nice. Uh, and the lamp is gonna look like that. No, no, no. Has to be lined up there. Watch your fingers. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're attaching the shelf. We have it marked similarly as we did for the brackets themselves. We use the same spacer. Okay. Is that tight? Okay, yeah, it yeah, looked tight fine. to me. And just keep in mind when you make your markings to mark to to make sure that you're using your brads on the correct side of the line. So as a for instance on this one, you make sure you're going below the line because that's where your spacer is instead of above the line where right. you would miss your shelf. So this looks good. Okay. Yep, that looks good. The bottom from the inside looks good. All right, so... So here's our shelf so far with the lamp on it. And as you can see, it's a, a fun little project to work on. I think I want to buy one of those Edison LED lamps. Edison bulbs, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would give it a really nice look to it. And of course, it is not designed to put a tremendous amount of weight on it, but you can put like an award or knickknacks or your wallet or you know a watch a wallet your keys maybe or a paperback depending on what you want to and of course if you want it more classic you, want it. you can use <laughs> uh, better wood like you can mm -hmm. use uh, mahogany mm -hmm. and I like this that, that's a personal taste yeah you or definitely... you could or you could uh, stain it up and give it that kind of rustic dark look like we've done on quite a number of our projects and actually it just occurred to me something like this would be really nice uh, by an entryway if you didn't have a lot of people coming in, and maybe it was one or two people, that that would be a good shelf for a wallet or just a couple of set of keys so that you always know where they are. And actually, we might end up staining it because everything in our bedroom is uh, black. Mm -hmm. So You'll need to match it. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, I like this as it is, but mm -hmm. it might not fit. I don't think it will, and I don't think your lovely spouse will like that. <laughs> but in the same token, so we might have a part two of this video. Because if I do that, I would probably put the wing, the, the cables in the wall, so oh. I don't, they're not visible, you know, I don't like cables underneath. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, here it is, folks, and of course we're going to sign it to get this out. <laughs> we're recording. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we just wanted to show you just a little bit of signing, it took maybe half a minute to do. Yeah. Takes care of that little mark. Again, this is a piece of board we bought uh, for 55 cents from the scrap bin. So, and it was in our scrap bin for a while before we used it actually, because yeah, when, when we go to the to the store, we look in the scrap bin and if we find the board that we like its character or its look, we simply buy it and then eventually we'll find the purpose for it. So as you can see, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I like it. So hopefully you will make your own and share it with us and tell us what you think. But actually, both sides of this was good. I mean, I think I do like the way this better here. Mm -hmm. But don't you think both were good? So start the electrical work by separating the two wires. 
Oh, that hurt. Yeah, this is dangerous. Thank you. I'm sorry. Just stabbed myself with the paddle bit. Now they will separate, okay. And let's do the same on the other one, too. If you are not feeling comfortable with uh, electricity, by the way, this is one of the most uh, simple electrical connections you can make. You're moving too fast for the camera. It was safer than where it was. Sorry, I know that my hand isn't in the way, but... Yep, everything's in the way. Tell them about that tool. What do you want me to tell them? Well, for anyone who doesn't know about electrical tools, or how to do electrical work. This is the most basic wire striping tool, which I don't know, stripping, which I don't know why I'm using because I have a better one, but I am. You're using it because it came with the package of stuff that we bought. I have a really cool one. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. It strips it. It separates it real quick and easy. Yep. But these are a little more convoluted in that you have to, essentially it bites the wire. You twist a little bit to just um, cut through the plastic part. Oops. Ah, that one's awesome. <laughs> and then I'm trying to not break your camera. And then the you process. pull it off and it leaves the wire exposed like that uh, without the plastic on it. And yes, try not to break your camera while you're doing it. Or stab yourself with a paddle bit. Well, that was a very really unique experience for you. Well, I know, right? It doesn't happen to everyone. Well. Now, the easiest way to connect the wires is... In general, for light, it doesn't make a difference uh, polarity-wise, but if you want, usually cables have writing on one side and not in the other. So if you want to make sure that it is wired the way it was before... Match up the, the writing. Just match up the writing, which is what we're going to and do. on this side, the writing, it's hard to see here, but it's on the right-hand side. There we go. You cannot there see we it? Go. Well, it was kind of facing away. Then you simply put the sleeve there. The sleeve there, and this is a crimper, so you might have to do that. I don't know. And then you crimp the wire to make the connection. So now we need to find, make sure that we're doing the the letter right. Mm -hmm. a little bit. Seems like it's a little long for that. No? No. Plus I will put electrical tape. Now you could do it without the crimpers but so I will also put some electric tape around them even though the crimps are uh, electrically isolated and you don't have to do that if you don't want to but if you want to to be on the safe side it's better to put some electrical tape on so we decided to go with LED Edison style bulbs just to give us a little bit of that uh, old style let's take a clo close up of this uh, these are just coming to the market I think they've been for a while but uh, this is the first one that we've bought and I really hope it will give us the effect we're looking for so we're going to just uh, put that in and so with all the connections made it has a very nice effect, a very nice warm light I think I don't know, can you see the bulb or does it? can't really see the bulb, it's too bright on camera but it does okay. have a nice light 
And this is the finished product. And that, as you see, it is something you can make from scrap wood. And the only thing we didn't show you was actually wrapping it on electrical tape. Also, if I put it, not if I, when I put it on my wall, I will actually put it behind the wall so that the, the cable will not show. Otherwise, no. you will have a cable coming from underneath. What you're saying is you will snake the cable through the right. wall. Of course, that is not a requirement, but I think it will be a nicer touch, right? But as you can see, it looks very nice, I think. And I hope you enjoy this little project. If you did, smash this like button. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Share, subscribe and like. We're very close to 800 subscribers. So if you have not subscribed, please support the channel by subscribing. We do regular um, uh, filmings and we publish a video every Wednesday and every Sunday. So a lot more fun projects to come. I really think this was a fun and exciting little project. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I like it. And really the electrical work is very minimal. And if you get the, the kit that we show you, um, it, it is really very, very easy to do.